Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a specific category of question under the heading called patterns in algebra. So within that category, we're looking at the classification called algebra. And within that classification, we're looking at the description called determining unknowns. So for this type of question, we're given a short description of what these questions typically involve. So let's take a close look here. The description says determining unknowns in algebra requires students to deduce what a specific symbol or symbols may represent in a number sentence or sequence. For these questions, we need to identify, compare and contrast similarities and differences within the question, interpreting contextual clues in an effective and efficient manner. Patterns in algebra may involve scales and grid puzzles where students may have to deduce the numerical representation of a particular symbol. It is best to replace the diagrams with equations and algebraic, sorry, Arabic numerals solving the equation from here on out. These questions may involve simultaneous equations for harder questions, uh, sorry, may, where harder questions may require you to work with multiple different equations. Okay, so that description basically tells us that algebra is a puzzle solving type of question where the fundamental key main point is to figure out an unknown and that unknown is represented typically by a alphabet letter or some sort of shape or some kind of symbol that is used instead of a number. And we're going to have to figure out what actual number the shape or symbol represents. And the way we do that is by taking in all the clues that the question provides to us. And depending on the type of question, the type of clues can vary, where it could be visual, so it could be a diagram of something some scales where you have to figure out what the different symbols represent or it could also be in the form of a grid. It doesn't really matter in what form they appear in because regardless of the shape that is presented to you, the, the technique that you use is by transforming the diagram into basically a series of equations using normal numbers. And then you can try and figure out what the number represents by using the equations. Now, sometimes there may be multiple equations where you have to use a couple of them at the same time, which is what simultaneous equations are to figure out the answer. And that's because just using one equation just doesn't tell us enough information. So we actually need to incorporate the hints from different equations as well. So it doesn't really matter how many equations that you're given, as long as you understand the technique that you can use to tackle these questions, these questions can be quite straightforward. So let's try and work out a common example that you can see with this type of question. Okay, so in this example question, we're given the value of the circle, we're going to try to find it in this grid puzzle. So if you remember in the description we saw, we can have these questions usually in the form of a scale or we can have it in the form of a grid. Now in the case of a grid, we can see that we've got this three by three grid where there's a bunch of different shapes inside and each of them is next to a number. So we can use those contextual clues to figure out that the question wants us to see that each row or a column should basically add up to this number. So that means even if the question has been provided to us in the form of a grid, we can easily transform it into a series of equations. Now, turning into a series of equations makes us makes the questions just so much easier to solve. So if you can do that, always make sure that's your first step. So if we take, for example, this row in particular, we can see that it wants triangle plus square plus circle is equal to 12. Now, from that equation, we actually don't know what any of these shapes is equal to. So we can't figure out the, the value of the circle from this equation alone. So what it looks like is that we're actually going to have a bunch of different equations that 
provide us gradually more and more hints about what the circle is. So we're actually going to try and look at a row that has a few less different types of shapes. So the reason being, the less shapes or unknowns you have to work with, the less work that you have to do. So let's take a look at the row that only has two shapes rather than three. And for example, I can see this one, which says triangle plus triangle plus square is equal to 16. Now, normal rules of algebra when you can collect like terms still apply. So these two triangles can be simplified into two triangle plus square is equal to 16. Now, two triangles and one square being equal to 16 doesn't provide us enough information about what the square or triangle represents. So it looks like we actually need to do at least one more equation to figure out the answer. So take a look at this row, which also only has triangles or squares. And this one actually says square plus square plus triangle is equal to 14. Again, simplifying the equation, we've got two square plus triangle is equal to 14. Okay, so using these two equations, there's kind of two big different techniques that you can use to figure out the answer. And both of them are equally valid methods and you're free to choose whichever one you're more comfortable with to use in an exam scenario. So let's go through both of those methods. For the first method, it would kind of be involving isolating just one shape and then using that to figure out the answer. So what I mean by that is take a look at this first equation. Now you can do it with the second equation too, but just for example's sake, so let's choose the first one. We can see that the square has no number in front of it. So we can very easily make the square the subject of the equation. And what I mean by making it the subject is for the square to be the only thing next to the equal sign and everything else goes on the other side of the equal sign. So that would become 16 minus two triangle. Now, since we know what the square is in terms of just the numbers and the triangle, we can then substitute this bad boy into the second equation to figure out what the triangle is equal to. So instead of this square, we're going to replace it with what it equals to, 16 minus two triangle. So the equation then becomes two times 16 minus triangle plus triangle is equal to 14. So using our normal algebraic equations, this simplifies to 32 minus four triangle plus triangle is equal to 14, which simplifies into negative three triangle is equal to 14 minus 32, which is equal to negative 18. That gives us triangle is equal to six. Now that we know that what the triangle is equal to, we can then fit this one into this first equation to figure out what the square is equal to. If our square is equal to 16 minus two triangle, and we know what the triangle is equal to, this gives us 16 minus 12 is equal to four, so the square is equal to four. Then, since we know the value of the square, and the circle, and sorry, not the circle, the triangle, we can then use this first equation to figure out the answer. The triangle is equal to six, plus the square, which is equal to four, plus the circle equals 12. So clearly the circle must equal two. So the correct answer option would be option A. The other method that you can do is try to get rid of one of the shapes using algebraic tricks. So again, going back to the two equations that we identified from the grid, we can see that it's two triangle plus square is equal to 16 and triangle plus two square is equal to 14. So just to be clear, I've rearranged this equation so this triangle comes first. And we can do that because addition means you can do it in any order you want. Now, the reason I've done this is because we actually want the two different shapes to align up in like this in columns. Now, remember in, in equations, you can do whatever you want to it, as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by two 
to give us 2 triangle plus 4 square is equal to 28. Now, with these two equations, what we can do is we can actually subtract them from each other. So from 2 triangle plus 4 square is equal to 28, I'm going to subtract the entire equation 2 triangle plus square is equal to 16. So what that looks like is you do each subtraction column by column like this. So the maths is 2 triangle minus 2 triangle is equal to 0. And that's the reason I multiplied the re the, this equation by 2. That allows me, when subtracted, to get rid of this entire column and we're now only left with squares and numbers. So we're left with... 5 square is, oh sorry, not 5 square, we're subtracting, my apologies. We're left with 3 square is equal to 28 minus 16, which is equal to 12. So 1 square is equal to 4, then the rest of the procedure is exactly the same as before. We use this value to figure out what the triangle is, then use those true values to figure out what the circle is. It doesn't really matter which method you use, both are equally time consuming and are similar in difficulty. It just comes down to the matter of personal choice. So hopefully you can use this kind of technique for future algebra determining unknown questions. And I really hope this was of big help to you.